It's official. Premier Doug Ford and his PC government have introduced legislation to cut the size of Toronto City Council by almost half. Ford says it's been his plan for years, but the move is drawing strong criticism from the opposition at Queen's Park. Where exactly in his plan for the people, he said he would specifically cut Toronto City Council in half in the middle of our election. When I was down at City Council, I put it to a vote. I spoke a hundred times about reducing the size and cost of government. Under the Better Local Government Act, Toronto is the only city that will see its council slashed by Premier Doug Ford. For now, it would be reduced from 47 councillors to 25. Now, Toronto, Toronto City Council is battling back against the Ford plan to reduce its numbers. Council voted last night to hold a referendum on its size. The council will also meet next month to get advice from their solicitors on whether there is any legal action that they can take. Meanwhile, lawyer Rocco Ashampong, a Ward 13 candidate, isn't waiting. He plans to ask the Superior Court of Ontario to put an end to Ford's legislation, claiming it unfairly interferes with the municipal vote. We will not know the rules of the game that we're playing by. We will not even know the existing ward and boundaries to which we were able to contest. Withdraw. In the middle of local elections to take power. Well, the province, away. though, holds all the cards. Even if the city wants to hold a referendum, it needs approval from Queen's Park to go forward. And there is not a lot of time for this to be worked out because the election, of course, is on October 22nd. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau was in Toronto yesterday to pay his respects to the victims of the Danforth shooting. While visiting a memorial at Alexander the Great Parquet, he was asked about how Ottawa will address national concerns about gun control. Uh, people need to be safe. Uh, and we need to take the right measures to do that. And we're looking at uh, things that have been done around the world, things that have been done in other jurisdictions, looking at uh, the best evidence, the best data. Uh, to make the right decisions, to make sure that we are uh, ensuring that our citizens, our communities are safe into the future. Two of the 15 victims in the attack were laid to rest yesterday. Trudeau attended a funeral service for 18-year-old Reese Fallon in Scarborough, and 10-year-old Julianne Acosis was laid to rest in a separate ceremony in Markham. Thirteen others were wounded. The gunman, identified as 29-year-old Faisal Hussein, was found dead with a gunshot wound after a brief exchange of shots with police. Well, happening right now, police are investigating a stabbing in Rexdale that sent one man to hospital. The attack happened just after 2 near Finch Avenue and Martin Grove. The victim, a man in his 20s, rushed to hospital in life-threatening condition with multiple stab wounds. Police still have an area of this townhouse complex cordoned off as they continue their investigation. So far, no word on suspects. A young man is in hospital after an early morning shooting in Mississauga. It happened at Dundas and Wharton Way near Dixie Road at around 2.30 this morning. The man's exact age is not yet known, but paramedics say he's in his late teens or early 20s. His injuries are not believed to be life-threatening. Well, the GTA City has been named the best place to live in the country. According to an annual list by Money Sense, Oakville topped the list as not only the best city to live in Canada overall, but also the best municipality for new Canadians. It's also ranked the third best place to retire and the fifth best place to raise a family. Toronto ranks at 16 this year. A little later in the show, we'll be speaking with Money Sense editor Claire Brano uh, for the rest of that list. It is 6.06 here on VT. We'll send it down to Winston and Roger.